Hi, I'm Dennis Fisher, one of the editors of Threat Post, and I just wanted to talk a little bit today about the botnet story that I posted yesterday on the site. If you haven't had a chance to read it yet, I, I'd uh, encourage you to go check it out. It's, it's sort of a look back at the origins of the botnet problem, how things got to where they are right now, and how it all started about 10, 12 years ago, depending on how you want to mark the date, um, with some sort of kind of amateurish denial of service attacks, um, to be honest, that sort of set the stage for what we've all been living through um, the last few years with botnets. So I went back and did a lot of research on, on the attacks that happened in the beginning of 2000, um, the denial of service attacks against Yahoo and CNN and ZDNet and some of the other big sites online, eBay and Amazon were also involved. They were done by uh, a hacker who called himself Mafia Boy, and those sort of kicked off um, what we sort of look at as a denial of service and botnet problem um, that's evolved to where we are now. So I, I had just started covering security uh, when those attacks happened, so I wrote about them at the time, but um, you know, I remember how everything happened and what a huge deal it was, but just going back and reading about them again and talking to the people, to the security experts who have been studying it since then, like Jose Desario and Dave Dietrich um, and others, it, it, the thing that really um, sort of came to light is how, um, how big of a problem this is and how bad it is and how little people understand about the nature of the problem. So, you know, obviously it started out as these denial of service attacks back then um, with script kitties and guys using IRC to control their botnets and sort of dosing each other as pranks and, and taking down e-commerce sites just as, you know, sort of a show of strength, but not really thinking much beyond that. Um, and that's evolved. It, it evolved uh, first into to these botnets being used to distribute spam and now it's evolved into this huge problem with SQL injection attacks against legitimate websites. Um, the botnets have become sort of the foundation of the bigger cybercrime problem that we're all facing. So the, the scope of this thing is really, um, I think, beyond what most people, even in the security industry, understand. Um, and the second thing that really struck me is that there's really no um, solution available uh, that anyone can point to because this is not just one problem, it's kind of a multifaceted problem that involves security vulnerabilities and web applications that, are, that allow these SQL injection attacks, um, as well as security vulnerabilities in the endpoints uh, that lead to the infections of the, the PCs that become the bots. And a lot of those, those bots are Windows machines running in uh, you know, homes and user uh, environments, not so much the enterprise. So. The, the home user obviously doesn't pay that much attention to uh, these new attacks, new vulnerabilities. They just hopefully turn on Windows Update and download the patches when they're available and go on about their business. But that's not always good enough as, there, as, as we've seen. So what ends up happening is a lot of times even if these machines are, are cleaned, if the infection is found and cleaned, they get reinfected again because these users are not correcting their behavior, they're not correcting the underlying vulnerabilities that are leading to these attacks. So um, obviously there's a lot of money involved in these, these botnets as well because they're being used by cyber criminals to, to support um, credit card theft and spam operations. So the problem isn't going away anytime soon. And I'm actually going to have a couple of follow-up stories um, to this looking at um, the spam problem specifically and the SQL injection problem specifically in the next couple of weeks. So uh, I'd encourage you to watch out for those. And in the meantime, take a look at that, the story I posted on Monday. And there's a podcast that went along with it with Jose Nazario from Arbor Networks that's uh, well worth a listen as well.